This episode of the Amp Hour is brought to you by electronicsurplus.com. From vacuum tubes to semiconductors, Electronic Surplus offers a huge selection of current and legacy products that integrate into your next design. Electronic Surplus also specializes in hard to find replacement components and off the wall parts you can't find anywhere else. All offered at some of the lowest prices on the internet. To learn more about Electronic Surplus and to support the show, go to theamphour.com slash ES and you'll be whisked away to an online marketplace of weird and wonderful things. This is the Amp Hour Podcast, recorded January 15th, 2013. Episode 128, Cadogenous Kinetic Knowledge. Welcome to the Amp Hour. I'm Dave Jones from the EEV blog. And I'm Chris Gamble of Chris Gamble's Analog Life. Hey, Chris. Uh, top of the morning, Dave, for, for you, I guess. Yeah, it is. Bottom, I'll try not to yawn here. on the show. Well, no, it's 11.30 here. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> I've got to get this out of the way. You know who yeah. I hate? Who's that? <clears throat> the United States government. <laughs> I've heard that before. I, yeah. uh, here they, here's another classic example of them screwing up the tech economic industry. Economic development? Oh, I know. Yep, economic development and the tech industry. It pisses me off. You know, Dave, you, done... can't, you know you got to listen to the Rolling Stones. You can't always get what you want, Dave. And I bet you didn't <laughs> oh, even sign that goddamn petition. I do, well, I'm not... Am I allowed well, to? I'm not a U.S. citizen. I don't, I don't know if you're allowed to either. <laughs> anyway, folks, what I'm pissed off about is the United States government denied a um, a petition from the people to build a Death Star. Seriously? Yep. How could they? I, 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 imagine the jobs it would have created. Imagine, imagine the electronics the tech industry. I know. Yeah. Oh. You know that the, the controls for that that death ray is. They've got to be some cool stuff in there, right? Well, there's a nice big handle that, you know, they move forward <laughs> and powers up, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have to wear that funny helmet, that's, right? That's got to be worth a couple of million bucks, yeah. you know, just that nice chrome-plated handle, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, they. there was an official, official government petition. Apparently, you can go to the White House Gov website or something, and if you get, what is it, 35,000... Signatures 20, or something? 25,000, I think. 25,000 signatures, which blah, you can get that on any forum these days, can't you? Anyway, uh, um, yeah. somebody petitioned the government to, <laughs> they wanted them to build a Death Star. I think it was actually Fantastic. 4chan. I think it was like, this was actually just a bunch of trolling, and then, you know, they. <laughs> and and then they did got it. They got, it. Yeah. <laughs> it's fantastic. And, yeah, and I, I'm sure a lot of people out there have seen it before, but. Uh, yeah, uh, well, you know. But the the response is just, I mean, this is how you do the internet, right? I mean, this is like, yeah, this yeah. is the chief yeah. of science and space branch at the the OMB, and um, the OMB, the Office of Management and Budget. Basically, they kind of figure <laughs> out how how right. deep of crap we're in. Um, yeah. So <laughs> this is the so one other senior dudes at the White House in the way in the White House Department who responded to this. Right, yeah. because they yeah. they have to by law, I think. Once you get the number of signatures, they have to look it's at it. Not, they have it's to not consider law. it. it no, oh, it's well, not, it's well, just a promise. Okay, but right. but still, oh, okay. yeah, right. But still, yeah, I yeah. Made, made a promise. Promise is as good as a law. Hold it. Hold the bastards to it. <laughs> yes, a promise is as good as a law when coming from a politician. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, boy. Yeah. And they officially responded. If you haven't seen it, please check it out. It's great. Yes, we will, we will link <sighs> yep. that in. It's, it's, it's very good. Lots of nerdy references, yep. lots of nice links. Yep. There was another one on there, though, that I, that I liked even more. Uh, oh, do tell. There was, there was one about actually ma- I mean, making the metric system a, uh, an official, the official oh, measurement system of the U.S. I saw you tweeted that, yeah. Yeah. Right. And... Um, and this is Later obviously a serious out, petition, right? Uh, yeah, I guess this is a little more serious than the other one. Um, l- later, uh, Josh Meyer on t- on Twitter he uh, he actually alerted me to the fact that uh, it actually is the official 
measurement system of the United States. Uh, right, I believe, yes. I think he's, I did, I I didn't, think he's I correct. I didn't know that. Yeah, they just don't implement it. Right, exactly. It's <laughs> in, more of a it's No, more of a I guideline. think on food. Isn't food, doesn't food now have to come in uh, grams? Uh, I think it, it, food, is, it is dual listed. Law, food is, oh, dual. Right, okay. Got yeah. it. Yeah. But yeah, there's actually, yep. uh, you know, we've been on metric since 1866, apparently. But, uh, you <laughs> right. know, it's, 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 not, it's not in all the, you know, the road signs aren't like that. Yeah, um, right. You know, there's shades of gray for all this yep. stuff, right? I mean, like, I'm sure we talked about this before, like a 50 episodes back or something, and somebody pointed out that, yes, they are metric, or you guys are metric, and, yeah, they just don't care. Yeah, it bugs me. <laughs> I don't know. Right. I, I still wish it would happen. Yeah. Mm. It probably won't. But. I started laying out a board... Um, the other day, I used metric for uh, traces. Really? I don't know what. I, yeah, I don't know what possessed me to do that because normally I only use metric for you know uh, the physical dimension, like the physical stuff, like the board yeah. dimensions. Um, well, the grid, some you know the grid often because the you know SMD components are often uh, the, the, a metric uh, grid these days. Some of them and um, oh, and really? uh, like uh, hole sizes, you know those sort of manufacturing things. I always do yeah. in metric, but uh, traces. I've always done traces in imperial. You know huh. mills. You know a yeah, standard. T- you know a standard ten mil trace, standard ten thou trace. Um, yeah, but I decided bugger it. I'll use point two millimeter traces this time and huh. see how it goes. I don't know. Well, I've yeah. I've done it before where I've been forced to because I don't know some anal retentive wanted me to do it. Um, for well, some what, reason, but uh, what's the reason you st- you do it the other way, anyways? I mean, is it what got you started oh, on old Imperial? habits? I've been laying out boards with CAD software for well, since before you were born, Sonny. And um, yeah, probably, I've yeah. always used Im- Imperial, and it's just you know second nature to me. I know what a ten thou track is. You know, a point two oh, millimeter yeah, yeah, yeah. track. I get doesn't that, but I mean, I mean, what was what was the initial reason? Was it because the CAD programs didn't offer metric, or I mean? You've been on metric oh, yes, most of your no, life, right? Back, well, you're talking back in the old days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like oh, how yeah, you got started. Yeah. On Everything that. was done in Imperial. Everything huh. was done. Now, they did offer metric, but you know, Imperial was was just the given thing th- that you used. Everything you yeah. read, you know, all of the manufacturers they gave you their manufacturing tolerances in Imperial. You know, we can do eight thou track and space. So you, uh, that's what you set your limits to. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. And that's still very common today. I'd say probably, ah, uh, maybe a majority. I'm not sure, but you know, it's probably half and half of the manufacturers out there will still specify their manufacturing tolerances in Imperial. Yeah. They'll yeah, it's say silly too because it's, it's so, so it's so uh, so arbitrary, right? It's like yeah, they say six and six, you know, space mm, and, yep. and 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 trace, yep. but it's just, you know you could just as easily say whatever the what is the conversion like three point nine or something like that. So it'd be like you know twenty three, twenty you know twenty three space and trace mm-hmm. kind of thing, you know, in millimeters, and it's like okay, you know, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> and well, yeah, and like. And of course, point two millimeters is around about eight thou, you know, give yeah. or take a couple of you know third decimal places or something. So, you know, I don't know. It's just yeah, yeah. it's just it's just a lot it's of convention, you know. Yeah, I guess old habits die hard. Yep. So what what made this time be different? Why? Oh, was I it just, just a lark. You I mean, know, I just thought, ah, oh, what the heck, you know, I'll just yeah. Do it for fun, you know. You know yeah. You know, I really want to take longer on this. I need to reacclimate. I need to. <laughs> Why don't you just switch over to new CAD program too, Dave? Uh, yeah. God. Did you? No. No, I didn't. No, uh, because I'm still working on the same bloody ass project I've you know, been working on for years. Right, and, but you switched uh, over, so why not at that is. point? You might as right, well have switched. Uh, well, yeah, but uh, you know, but then you've reset all the work you've done. I've already got. All the component libraries and everything, you know, Ugh. in there and all done and all sorts of things all already done in the existing package. So to start from scratch again would be, yeah, a pain in that the would ass. would be tough. Yeah, you're right. Yep. You're right. And I still don't know the best one to choose because I haven't properly evaluated them. Right. So you spend all your you time uh, complaining about well, how your I project's guess, not done. Well, yeah, <laughs> exactly. I guess the only, ironically though, the only good way to figure out which is the best package 
is to actually do a full project in it. Oh right? yeah. You just so, got to sw- you, know. you need to I'd say the best way to learn a new package is to swear at it. Um, if you're swearing at the PCB uh, you know software you're using, then you're yep. learning. If you're yep. if you're if you're clicking along and you know in a groove, then you've learned. At least at least at a temporary state. But yeah, if you're not swearing at it, you're not learning it. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Oh boy. <laughs> Which it's <sighs> unfortunate. I, I've I've been doing that on a on a more on the more theoretical side of things. I've been like back and forth on this this grounding scheme I've been working on, and man, I was just I was screaming. I was literally screaming on Friday about it, and I spent all weekend <laughs> reading about it. And and uh, and actually, there's I should mention this. I I mentioned it online before, but um, there's actually this really really great analog devices um book that's free online and i'll, I'll put the Do link tell. in the show notes um uh, i might have to find it. it i forget the guy's name it's hank something but it's the uh it's a li- linear circuit design book from analog devices cool and oh yeah linear, linear circuit design handbook and it's all available free online and and you know you can get a print copy for like 80 bucks but you know if you're reading pdfs i mean like mm-hmm it's killer, and it's all there. At first, at first, when I found it, I thought it, I thought I was finding like a secret stash, yeah, right, like, <laughs> buried on analog devices site. Um, but no, it's actually there's actually a page that I can link in, and and they they offer it all up for Sweet. free. Um, and it's great. It is really great. It's uh, Hank Zumbelin, it's published in two thousand eight. Yeah. Oh, it's it's really really good. So, as an analog person, I highly highly recommend this book. It's uh, brilliant. So what's this ground thing you've been working on? Is this like a PCB grounding thing or is it a system yeah. grounding thing? Well, it it is. I mean, it's a system level on the PCB. So like multiple grounds, multiple yep. rails kind of thing. And just kind of figuring mm-hmm. out star ground and where current, you know, like, and, and that's what this yeah, yeah, book yeah. by Hank talks about too is, you know, follow the current. That's the important thing. You know, you got to, you know, and I knew a lot well, of this more stuff. more important but it, than that, current loop. That's, yeah, well, yeah. that's, yeah, 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 yeah. that's the I essential mean, that's, thing, current loops. I guess Folks. that was implied in my statement, but yeah, yeah, yeah of course. In yeah. A gr- when you're looking at grounding, obviously you're implying that it, it's got to it's got to come back at some point too. And yeah, I remember yeah. that too. Circuits you know, have it was... to complete the loop, you know, as you learnt, you know, when you have a light bulb and a switch, it has to complete yeah. the circuit. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. Yeah, and when you got a ground plane, I mean, that's that's the crazy thing about it. You know, like yeah. when you got a ground plane, it's just a sheet of copper, right? But mm. a lot of times, but it, the... it has inductance too. Yeah, it has it inductance, has inductance and... and that's why it will follow the the current will follow the least inductive loop path. So current doesn't evenly throw th- flow th- across a PCB a ground plane. That's right. That's right. At, yeah. at high and frequency. And that's, and that's, DC, and that's what you have to does, watch out it, because yeah. oftentimes they get higher frequencies that will follow right underneath whatever trace you're, you're sending exactly. the, the signal yep. out at. Um, I do a lot of lower lower uh, current stuff, but uh, you know a lot of that same stuff still applies. Not all mm-hmm. of it, obviously, but uh, yeah, so it's been, you know... I've just been reading and banging my head against the book. Well, not the book. I guess the screen because it's a PDF. And uh, right, yeah, it's a great book. And you know, it's it's hard to find a lot of this. You know, even like, you know, I even reread your PDF. The the uh, oh, the PCB design one. Yeah, yeah. you know, right. it, like and when you're at that point where you're banging your head against something, you just kind of start grasping at whatever you can find hoping you, know? you can find a nugget of information that solves your problem you know exactly <laughs> yeah. exactly yeah it's kind of it's kind of manic actually you know it's like you, you probably end up missing a lot of good stuff in the end like i, I oh, guarantee sure. if i reread the chapter i was reading on it that it would um no i, because, I would find new yeah, stuff exactly yeah but because but, you're in a, such a frantic state yep yeah yep been there done that i i tend to f- thrive under those conditions though my yeah. wife doesn't understand it. You know, I'll get so aggro and I'll start shouting at the screen and rah, getting myself all worked up and she doesn't understand why I get so <laughs> aggro. It's because, you know, my senses are more finely tuned at that point. You know, I, I, I right. work more efficiently when I'm angry and under pressure. And you know. Yeah. Well, and you're well practiced at it too, right? I mean, like, yeah, yeah. that's <laughs> well, just what work does to you, right? When you're, when you're under the gun, you know, and you've... Yep. Yep. You just have to perform. Then you've you've kind of developed a, a whole other set of working habits that that might work better. Exactly. That might not be able to yeah. replicate when you're, you know, like 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 getting into the flow, right? It, you might not be in the flow when That's you're right. not under pressure, 
But mm -hmm. if you've got 10 hours to deliver, then you're going to be a lot more efficient your with your time than 10 set, days. starts subconsciously focusing better, I think, yeah. rather than wandering all over the place if you know that you haven't got a deadline. Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. For Nothing sure. like a deadline to get you get you going. See, that's what you need. You know, Dave, I will pay I will gladly offer my yelling at you services for $200 <laughs> an hour. You pay me $200, $200 an hour. and I will tell you you need to finish something. And I'm sure many of our listeners would what offer that, that same service. What does that work out to, you know, how much per shout? Per shout? Oh. Yeah. About 350. So you can <laughs> <laughs> how how about I just pay you per shout and then you can just randomly shout at me once a day or something like that? Hmm. I guess that, that wouldn't work. There's for the a time startup change. idea. Yeah. That's gonna be a startup. <laughs> yeah, you know, there's people that do like um they do like human interaction. Like I, I remember hearing a story about some some late twenties female who would come over to your house and cuddle with you, you know, like she would, you know, it was not, <laughs> right. it was strictly non-sexual, but it was like, just like, right. you know, human contact. It was a cuddle. Okay. And it was right. like, that's weird. And and this would be like the other side of it, right? It's like, it's like hire a drill sergeant.com. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh man. You might, you might've hit gold here, buddy. <laughs> I could have. Yep. Yeah. But, we'll so find on speaking, Kickstarter shortly. Yeah. Speaking of uh, procrastinating, how's your how's your board going? You were you were mentioning that. Oh, it's show. yeah. I started. I decided um, after I tweeted. I think after last uh, Tuesday, you know, I'd done like three or four videos in a row or something. Three three videos in three days or something. And I thought, bugger it, I'm going to take the rest of the week off, and I'm going to work on my project. And um, that's pretty much what I did. Um, you know, I've got other things to do too, obviously. Um, that always come along, but um, yeah, generally I spent um, pretty much uh, three days working on my projects. I was pretty darn happy with that. I wasn't uh, pleased with the, you know, I thought I'd probably have, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd have the board finished and stuff like that and I'd be able to send it out and eh, no, I didn't, you know, but I got the schematic finished, I got a new bomb finished and I got part of the board laid out. So I was, you know. Oh yeah? At, at least started. So, I mean, that's... It's yeah, well, uh, you know, well, because you don't start with your whole board component placement, but you fix your major components in place that you want to. Okay, these are fixed. You know, your front panel controls and your and your battery and your other stuff. You know, physical physical connectors and stuff like that, all there. Yeah. And then you start m routing out little modular blocks. So I routed out a couple of modular blocks and dragged them in, and so it's starting to take shape. And um, yeah, you yeah. sticking to oh. uh, two layers. Uh oh yeah yeah of course. Yeah. Always. Yeah, I guess. Yep. Well, not always. I mean, not always, right? I well, mean, like, no, for hobby no, stuff, yeah, well, no, because of it costs. But for a simple power supply project, it doesn't need yeah. to go four layers. If I've gone four layers, I've failed. As a layout guy, you know, yeah. if I have to go to four layers for such a design, that's, you know, a complete cop out and failure. Mm. So, yep. Not going to happen. So do you not do, uh, you don't do like power, obviously you don't do power planes or ground planes or anything like that, but do you do, uh, you do like pores on the top planes? Top oh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that, that's right. I will try and lay out everything on one side. I've talked about this before. I've even done video on it, um, like a time lapse <laughs> video of me laying out a board doing this. And um, yeah. yeah, I'll try and route everything on the one layer. So I'll do it as a one sided layout first. That's probably the key to doing a good double sided layout is to lay it out as if it's a single sided board first. And then yeah. at the end, you know, you, generally, if you're lucky, you'll be left with just a few power traces and stuff like that, which you can run on the bottom. But then, generally, you'll be left with a huge, big ground plane on the bottom. Yeah. Generally. Or, or on the top as well, and then you can stitch it together and it floods, you know. Yeah. And, um, yeah. So, that's how I'll generally try and lay it out. So. See, I, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I understand the, the two-layer thing, but I still... I don't like the 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 just the floods because I see people who do that and then like I look at I look at the actual floods and it's like well they get, it gets all chopped up you get these little islands of like nothingness and oh you're like, yeah, yeah no I've got auto uh, my software automatically removes um you know uh, islands uh, under yeah. a certain size and stuff like that but yeah. yeah no I I'll generally I won't just fill in copper for the sake of it but on the bottom I side I will you know right so, I didn't well, I didn't figure you yeah. would but uh, yeah right you know. I see that. I see that Some even on like do. dev boards I mean, and and like and stuff like that. And I'm like, really? Like, why? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's just a, a time thing, or maybe they're just giving it yeah. to the the new people. But 
Yeah. <laughs> I say as the new person, you know. Like. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Well, sometimes you have to. Sometimes there's reasons to do it. Like if you're doing a really large board, you can get warpage if you've got excess, you know, plain copper on one side and stuff like yeah. that. So, right. Yeah, you got to think about that sort of thing. But, you know, the boards I'm working on, you know, just you know, six inches by two inches or something. So... There yep. it is with that Imperial again. Man, you, you'll never make yeah, it in America. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no! Yeah. Uh, so you were mentioning anyway. that the, the layout took a good chunk of that time. What was the what was the, the issue there? Or not the layout, the uh, schematic. No, is it- the, um, the schematic. Oh, just, you know, a new bomb items. You know, I'm changing yeah. the design a little bit. Oh, I, oh this DC to DC converter is not available anymore. Oh, it was available yeah. two months yeah. ago. Oh, and the one that wasn't available two months ago is now available. Oh, I'll reuse that one. So I changed my DC to DC converter chip. I changed my charger chip because I wanted higher current. And, you know, so then you go through that whole iterative process of doing the whole bomb thing and, you know, finding alternatives, finding the lowest cost and availability and... <gasps> So yeah, I spent you know two days just dicking around. Um, yep. You know, on DigiKey and Mouse are trying to find suitable parts. Really. Yeah, it's I, the thing I hate about that is like you can. I I feel like for me at least I I can do it so out of my element where I'll you know I'll go for like two days and I'll I'll do the same thing where okay I need to find a new DC to DC converter, and then I find one I implement it. And then I look at the schematic and I realize, oh, I, I I didn't need a DC to DC converter at all, or something, you know, like something stupid yeah, yeah, like yeah, that, or right. I, yeah, I, oh, yeah, I'm going to exactly. change this thing yep. over here, and yep. now I don't need a DC to DC converter at all, exactly. you know, like that kind of thing. Yep. It's just there's so much churn. It's it's very. I know. There's, I there's know. no getting around it, but. Yeah. Well, sometimes you can just say, right, that's enough is enough. It's kind of sort of going to work, and I don't care. And sometimes that's. All you need, you know, if you're just yeah. doing a one-off test jig or something, you don't give a toss about that sort right. of stuff. You just yeah, want Skyware something to, to hack together something that works, right? right? But no, this is different, right? This is a project I'm putting quite a bit of little, you know, quite a bit of pride into, and you know, stuff like that. And I just Talk like, about it and lot, I enjoy so. doing that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've done like 15 videos on it, right? Yeah. So <laughs> uh, I'm not kidding. I think it's 15 or 16 videos. Oh, really? Wow. Both. Both both the designs, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> that's a lot. <laughs> oh boy. Well, I and think uh, one of the interesting things I found, though, mm-hmm. I tweeted this one as well, is that I ended up like the design has like over sixty resistors. Is that a lot? Sixty. Yeah, I know it's a lot. Right, that's and a lot it's a for power you. It's like, I've got a, I've well, got a design with like six hundred resistors. What do you? Oh like? well, yeah, I know. Well, yeah, well, I've so done that to too. Switch but... What's your problem? You know, like <laughs> no big deal. Come on, uh, what? What's the big deal? Uh, <laughs> but I, you know, it's just where do they all go? You just need, you know, you oh, think, yeah. oh, everything's in chips these days, right? But no, no, you know? no, no, no. It's just. Everything's yeah, in chips simple? these days, including including firmware, which can not our firmware, but I guess logic that can be set by resistors. You know, before you would have to yeah, have a right. FPGA to talk to it in order to set those same parameters, but now they just pull it internally and they say, "Well, just set a resistor and we'll figure out the rest." Yep. It's, yeah. But you know, every time you drive a transistor, you need a resistor. You know, every you know, if it's an open collector, you need a pull up. You, you know, yeah. If you want to do a little LC fil- RC filter, you know. Two stage. Yeah. Well, there's a couple of resistors. You know, well, if you need some voltage dividers, there's more resistors. Yep. You well, know? just thank That's, your lucky stars. Yeah. They're cheap, man. And stay yeah, away. From, cheap. Stay away from the precision ones. You'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, I have. Or just standard one yeah. percent stuff. Yeah. And I That's switched good. back from 0603 to 0805. Oh, windy. I just wanted them to look big and chunky. You know. Yeah. I guess it's friendlier yeah. for kit stuff. It's a, well, it's friendlier for yeah. If people want to hack it, you know, if people yeah. want to get in there and change the values, it's you know, it's just nicer, I think. So, um, although ordinarily I'd probably choose O six O three would be my standard part these days. Yeah, that'd be my standard yeah, size. I think that's kind of mm. to the point where I mean, not, not the majority of stock, but I'd say if you were looking at a distribution, I mean, you'd be you'd be in very safe territory with O six O three for the next. Oh yeah, oh f- you know, yep, yep, for sure. Ten ten years, maybe that's a stretch. I don't know. Yeah, five five years at least. <sighs> anyway, but yeah, that's I, enough uh, of my power supply project. If I if I've got if I've got any fancy resistors, I make sure they're they're. Uh, you can't get any fanciness in O four O two. Oh no, uh, you'd want a damn good reason. Right, exactly. Yeah, like you design a mobile to... phone or something, or a hearing aid, or 
Mm-hmm. You know, you're doing mobile phones or hearing aids. You're going 0201s or 010. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. If you're going better than 0402s. Oh, oh, no. And here yeah. we are talking Imperial. Why that's true. Don't we use, why don't we talk metrics? See, I don't even know the metric ones. That's why I've got my little PCB ruler here, you know, yeah. that I gave out at the uh, trade show. It's got the, like, an, a, um, a 08. Uh, 05, here we go, is a 12, is a, is a 2012, and an 0603 is a 1608, and an yeah. 0402 in, uh, is a, um, is a, you know, a 1005. It's like, I don't know those metric ones off the te- top of my head. I'm slowly learning them, but it's, uh, it, w- you know. it would be easier for, uh, <laughs> you know, talking about, when you get really small, right? Instead of saying oh one oh, whatever you say oh half mm. or you know not oh yep. five or whatever, or however, I don't even know how people. I I never touch them, so I don't even know how people say them. I but, uh, I don't touch them. I don't go that small. Yeah. No, that's definite. Uh, that is binocular or microscope land. I don't I don't like mm. microscope land. <laughs> <laughs> I can't drink coffee at that point. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Anyway, so that's why I've got my PCB ruler here. It's handy. It's got the little conversion, you know. Because if I, you know, if I'm searching for a component and it's in a footprint library, then it might have just the metric number on it. You know, it doesn't have the imperial. You know, it doesn't say 0805. Yeah. It's pain in the it's ass. Weird. It says 2012. It's too bad they don't do it the other way around. Where you know, like if it's met- metric, you can do the other, like 1220. You know, like so, you do the the short side first because you see that reference sometimes. Like oh, I see right. that yeah. some people do that, and I'm not sure why they do. But that would be I feel like that would be a good good way to delineate the two, so you could tell, um, you tell them apart. Right? You know? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, some of them are identical. Like, and yeah. there there is like an 0402 in both ones. You know, and technically you don't know which one you're talking about. Oh, good lord! So that would be really you know, small for yeah. metric. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, exactly. But uh, yeah, I think there is one that is an overlap between the two, and it's huh. it's very confusing. Yeah, that is confusing. Mm. Yeah, so I think people should switch them around. That would make it easier. Yep. <laughs> uh. Now we were talking about Kickstarters before, and um, uh, you mean like every last well, every episode in the past one hundred and twenty-seven? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you know, let's talk about it again. Why not? Um, because you were a bit miffed. Oh, you you felt a bit funny about this one. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's not bad. I mean, it's just it's just weird. You know, it's. Well, like, tell us a story. So, so there was one. I saw there was a post on probably Reddit or something like that. But you know, there's a, a Kickstarter for a open hackable Linux plus ARM embedded GPIO module, and it's on like an S uh, S O DIM. Yep. Is that what that is? It's like laptop memory. Yeah, like it's an S O DIM memory. Yep. Yeah. I've seen quite a few of those, but that's not yeah. one. You'll, that's that doesn't matter at all. No, no, it's tell just us, it's tell just us what uh, what it's you. weird because it's you know you start the video okay this looks like a cool little board and you open it up and then and and it's it's a company that's doing it and it's like oh well why why is a company doing this you know like I I guess uh-huh. that's that's my first reaction then the second reaction well Pebble Watch was like a company weren't they? I mean they were a company beforehand so. My brain starts to go into like, well, where do you draw the mm. line? And you know, like it. In the end, it doesn't really matter because yep. I have no say in any of this, anyways. But it's just, it's just interesting, and and potentially dangerous if you know because there's 30 days to go left on this one. There's like five thousand out of thirty thousand dollar goal. I, mm. I, I'm not sure they might make their goal, they might not. But um, it's just more of a, you know, it it if this becomes more commonplace if. If there are companies that start doing this kind of thing, it just dilutes it all. And but at the same right. time, you know, like you could miss out on something really cool, right? There could be a company that, like, like say, there's a bunch of engineers at Intel, and they get the yep. go ahead to you know make some open source processor in, in the fab, right? But they need you mm. know 100 grand to do so. That could be cool. So at the same time, you know, like it's I don't know, it's just a whole well, bunch of conflict. A, a, a lot of people may not know who this company is. If you haven't worked with LCDs before, um, then you may not have heard of. Crystal Fonts America Fonts, if that's how you with a Z, if that's how you uh, yeah. pronounce it. I've used their LCD modules before, right? They're a manufacturer. Yeah. They're a US. I don't think they manufacture in the US, but anyway, right. they're a um, they're a manufacturer of LCD modules and stuff like that. Quite one of the big players, right? So yeah. they, 
I'm not sure what they're worth, but they're a, you know, you can buy them at DigiKey and, you know, yeah. they're, 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 they're like a the major high, the player. High, uh, what's that? The high, as, not aspect ratio. Darn it. What's it called? Where like the contrast ratio? They're like high contrast. Oh, the high contrast. Yeah, they make high quality LCDs. They don't make one hung low cheapies. They make you no, know, these no. are the ones you know. You know, they cost ten you know bucks each, where you can get them on yeah. eBay for fifty cents. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So they make high spec LCDs. So it's a big company. But now they've decided to. Man, I, I don't know why. I haven't played the video, but yeah, I don't know. And then they're asking for like pledges as well. Like you, you know, you can pledge like just. Give them money for just because they're cool and they're developing this thing, you know. So you don't get anything in return. You just pledge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's okay. I mean, I, I don't, don't know. know. Well, it's but, a changing but that's landscape the other thing. A lot of people may not know it's a big company. I, I haven't well, watched you, the video, so I'm not yeah, sure if they say, do. If you, open, if you open the video, it becomes very apparent very quickly when you have oh, a round, right. okay. when you have a group of techs sitting behind you with the same name on their shirts, you know, and they say they're from the company. Uh, right, I mean, okay. They are upfront right. about it, they, yeah, yeah. and they are, and that's and that's fine. Right. You know? Oh, that's good. Yeah. And it, and it was but like yeah, a hobby why project. Why do they there, need so. to do it? Why don't they just do it? Because they're trying to get publicity, right? Well, that's maybe, what they're trying maybe to get. Not. It's a free publicity platform. Of course they are. Come on. You haven't seen the video. They, so you they don't, don't know. need the money to do it. They don't. They they do these every day of the week. They manufacture not not just LCDs, but they do all these demo boards to go with all these things, right? Yeah. So they've got I mean, their yeah, own, own in house group to do this. But yes, I mean yes, I agree with all the things you just said. But I, it doesn't it doesn't seem like that up front, and that's the other thing that irks me about it. It's like it's not like it's not upfront about it. Like here's our new module, right? They're not very obvious about it, but at the same time, like mm-hmm. that that. Then sneaking suspicion in my head, I'm just like, oh, is it? Is it? You know, you're kind of waiting for that other shoe to drop, and it's just like, man. <laughs> I don't know. Right. Hope, I just, you know, you know I, I like Kickstarter. Yeah, it's still I fledgling. It, I, I think it's just, you know, I don't want to see it start going the other direction yet. <laughs> yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't think I agree with it either. I, you know, if you're a big company and you can afford to do it, you... Just do it off your own bat. I don't like you using Kickstarter. I, you know, if you're yeah. like a one or two person company, fine, right? But but they are not. I mean, these, you know, this is a big company, Crystal Fonts, right? Yeah. So I, you know, I mean, it, yeah, and they say it's like the engineers within the company, so that's okay. But then it's like, eh, yeah, you guys do have money, so so at that point, exactly. then they're just you're just buying the boards, which is against the new rules. So it's like, eh, uh, uh, right, okay, yeah. Yeah, so I don't know how did they get this through, right? You, you, you're not allowed to just buy the boards, right? And you're not allowed to do it to set up a company. Yeah. And you're not allowed. There's all sorts of rules these days. So Yeah. Hmm. Well, on to another know. board that uh, we were a little uh, skeptical of at the beginning. And holy crap, has it showed the pants or you know, showed us up. It beat the pants off of us, I guess, or our predictions. Oh, we weren't skeptical, were we? We just went, I was a little skeptical. Whatever, it's just I was skeptical another, about their... Production schedule. People oh, go back and about listen. their production schedule and meeting the price point. Yeah, that's yeah. the only thing we were I was, skeptical about. I was wrong. I'm on record. I mean, I'm wrong a lot, <laughs> but this is another <laughs> one. I'm wrong again. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Raspberry Pi uh, hit Bingo a million sheets, u- folks. A, a million units. That's that's crazy. That's awesome. Yeah, just Farnell alone have sold half a million units. Yeah. Yeah. Now we, this is the interesting thing, right? It's supposed to be non-profit, right? The whole idea yeah. of this thing from day one was non-profit. Am I correct? Uh, it is. It is non-profit. Yeah. Right, but you can't tell me Farnells aren't making money on this. Yeah, but the foundation that created and manages the design. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I no, mean, they people, don't make money, but Farnell are making money on this. That's not right? how non-profits work, Dave. I mean, there's there's servicing companies yeah, that, well, that that help you know. Yeah, well, like, okay, like how about this? Right. Like when that, the Red Cross does a promotion, okay, right. uh, like they do like a concert on no. TV, right? And mm-hmm. and you donate ten dollars through your cell phone. Your cell phone is taking a cut of that. It's just a processing yep. fee. I mean, like that 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 doesn't mm. really bug me. There's there's no, I I have no problem with that. Yeah. But, okay. Well, I'm just mentioning the fact that it is non-profit yeah. and final make quite a. You don't know how much they make. <laughs> They're oh, a well, distributor. Don't they don't they make, make tons of money. Like, distributors don't make no, that much they, money, they, man. I mean, what? they they do oh, shit. You think they make a lot of money? Margins are incredible. No way. Not yes. Why? Maybe on the small stuff, the ones. How onesie do you think DigiKey's worth a billion dollars? 
because of the volume. They do tons of volume. So does Farnell. They they all do just tons of volume. Like their margins are like. I, I remember looking at it because I remember well, I looked at their. Be, okay. I looked at their their annual report and and I think it was from Mauser, right? Because they're owned by Berkshire Hathaway, which is Warren Buffett's uh, company. Right. And I'm a huge Warren Buffett fan, so I was like, "Oh, Mauser's owned by Warren Buffett. That's really cool." And I was looking at, I think it was theirs, their their annual report, and their it was like, "Oh, you know, we our revenues are a billion dollars. Wow, that's great, and profits of like fifty million. Holy crap, really? <laughs> like that means that you're that's, that's like five percent, yeah, yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> I mean, not terrible. I mean, you're still making money, but just think about yeah, the churn I, it's there, not you know? That great. It's just, yeah, right. Yep. So the cost of sales is really, really high, and. And you don't make a lot per unit. You know, I'd rather be Apple, right, where you're making 50% yep. on every yeah, unit you sell. Yeah, their overheads are very large. Their service overheads are very large. Right. Yeah. Overheads are hard, large. You know, they're, they're effectively an online grocery store for parts, which is yes. yep. tough. Yeah, but, it's uh, expensive to hold all that stock and, and actually exactly. distribute it and, you know, yeah. and warehouse it and do whatever. Yeah, do you know in the in the unit? I think I think one of the reasons in the states, at least, there's actually a tax on uh, on inventory. If you hold inventory, you can be taxed. Oh, on. really? Yeah, okay. it's, it's weird. Well, I'm it's probably sure. the same. Yeah, I think it's the same here. We we have end of year stock take sales. You know, I'm not sure how it works. I don't yeah. give a toss about that stuff. Yeah, but until they figure yeah. out you're holding a bunch of reels of parts, they'll come get you. Oh, yeah, reels of parts. <laughs> I just no, nah, that's just bullshit. As if I'm going to count every. But no, technically. Right, that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to count every single freaking resistor on the reel that you have left over at the end of the. And it's like bullshit. No, I'll just no. Nah. I just ride off at the end yeah. of the year, and then and it all evens out over over two years. Right? Yeah. It, it just well at that you know, point, it's worth more for you just, to just say, well, that's a whole reel. That thing costs forty dollars instead of maybe thirty dollars because there's I counted all the resistors on there. <laughs> <laughs> you're wrong. Yeah, uh, it's just yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Well, speaking of uh, stock, we should we should uh, we should mention our, our our sponsor from this week. We have a n- new sponsor for this episode. A new sponsor, uh, and not only that, a Cleveland sponsor. How about that? Woohoo! Local. Yeah, yeah. Well, local for uh, you. It's still fifteen thousand miles away for me. That's true. Yeah, yeah. It might might be kind of tough sorry, for you. Metric, too. but we are yeah. talking American here. That's true. Uh, so it's electronicsurplus.com. It's a, like I said, local business here. They have an online store, though. Um, Dave and I were kind of poking through there earlier, just kind of looking. I've looked. I've, I've obviously been there before. They actually have a storefront that I've been to. Um, but most of their stuff's online. And, um, yeah, there's some cool stuff on here. A lot, of, a lot of older stuff, you know, but good for projects. Like I'm looking at the uh, the analog indicators and meters and stuff. And a lot of these things are kind of, they're one off. So, you know, but if you're, if you're making a project where you want to have a, you know, analog indicator, you can go on here and, mm. you know, you can find something like that. Well, that's, make a it good, look... that's a good thing about these surplus stores is that, you know, yeah, they they sell these weird one off kind of things. Right. Exactly. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, and so you know, like they, I think a lot of their business too is about not not just one offs, but like replacements and stuff like that. So you know, you you kind of see see a wide range of stuff. You know, so you might see a switch on there that's like, oh, why why is it like that? Oh, okay, well that's for like a fridge or something. You know, that the people yep, might actually exactly. need. But then there are also you know transformers, there's transistors, resistors. You know, there's a lot of great, uh, a lot of good power resistors on here, th- things like that. Just a lot of it's just it's like a on- online flea market almost. You know, like it's just you can find a lot of stuff here um high so voltage capacitors Woo-hoo. yeah they got a whole category for high voltage capacitors yeah so um i, I encourage people to go check it out um if you go to the amphour.com slash es um that'll actually take you there and then we also uh get credit for that so we'll have that link in the show notes um but we really appreciate everybody supporting the show by by going to check out their stuff and uh yeah, hope hope you enjoy it. There's Please there's do. some cool stuff on there, and, and definitely, you know, poke around and, and see what you can find. I assume they only ship to like US. Their main markets are US, right? They um, they probably aren't going to ship you a couple of. I you know, think they'll ship high it voltage to you. caps to Australia. Well, they probably will. Yeah, they they will. <laughs> yeah. Postage is probably expensive for international stuff. Right. Yeah. So if especially you find if it's you... heavy, if it's a big heavy bit of surplus yeah. gear, you know, yeah. ugh, you know. Postage costs ten times more than the unit does. That always sucks. It does. Sometimes it's worth it though if you yep. can find something really, you know, kind of out there and and, and different. Mm. So, 
like I said, uh, people should poke around and see what they can find. Yep. Thank you very much, electronicsurplus.com. Yep. Speaking All right, what of a- surplus gear, I yeah. scored, I think it's the first time ever on eBay, um, it'll be a teardown item. I got it for 99 cents. Really? What'd you get? Yeah, like, like, yeah. You, you, you always see these, you know, these eBay listings. You know, it starts out at ninety nine cents, but by the time everyone bids on it, it's, you know, yeah, hundred yeah, bucks yeah. or whatever. But no, I actually got. It. I was the only bidder, and I got it for ninety nine cents. I don't think so, that's ever happened to me. So, so what is this this wonderful piece <laughs> oh, of equipment you got? I'm not, not going to tell you. It'll be it'll be oh, tear down Tuesday. You're going to tell me after the show, well, though. You better tell me. Hopefully today. Yeah, it's not that <laughs> exciting. It's, you know, oh. it's a bit of old vintage eighties, um, bit of. Uh, uh, 80s development gear, let's say. Okay, okay. Yep. I'm yeah. guessing... Actually, in, I don't in, know... In circuit emulator. That's what I'm guessing. All right. That's your Boring. guess. Boring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing, right? It Like, because I can't power it up. Well, I could power it up, but it doesn't. it's not going to do anything, right? Yeah, because I that, don't that have the... Tough. You know, the, the, the software for it comes on a, you know, five and a quarter inch floppy, <laughs> you know, and it's got a plug-in right. DOS PC, a uh, plug-in ISA PC card. You oh, know? God, I mean, yeah. Well, I, you know, I'd love to show you it working, but... Yeah. <laughs> You know? For now, we're just going to um, poke at all the parts and see what's in there. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's that's tough. Yeah. It's uh. And it's you know it's not going to be that exciting inside. There's going to be a whole bunch of you know dip parts. I'm sure. You know, it'll just be you know five or six boards of dip because yeah. that that was the vintage. You know, maybe it's got some SMD in there, but yeah, my yeah. my guess would be uh, dip with all the doubles, the classic double sided. Dip high density layouts. You remember the, all the boards, like all the right angles, from the, and <laughs> and all, from all the right angles. And this was when routing, you know, auto routing actually worked because you know you would have to make a system, right? You didn't have one microcontroller to do everything. You, you know, you you had to build everything out of seven four series logic or whatever. Yeah. You know, if you're lucky, a couple of gate arrays and you know, stuff like that. But you you might have a hundred chips and a hundred dip, you know, dip chips, and you've got a li- and you put them all in line. Right, and so you put them in lines and lines and lines, all on your board like this, and then you go auto route, you know. <laughs> and and this was you it know was and, zooming, yeah. Yeah, and, and the auto routers because the speeds were so slow. We're only talking a couple of megahertz, right? Yeah. And and you might have a four layer board, right? You know, you might have your ground plane in the middle with your five volt rail. No, it's just three point three volt rubbish back then, right? right? It would be five volts, and and uh, yeah, and it would just route them because. You know, um, because routing um, algorithms are quite efficient at doing those sort of, you know, double-sided layouts. You know, so so you would specify the rules. Well, one layer all goes horizontal and the other layer all goes vertical oh, traces. God. So it would, you know, and oh, <laughs> so it would give you, you know, 20 vias to get to the yeah. other side of the board, but it would get there, right? Wow. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And then you just start spouting RF energy all over the place. Oh, yeah, of course, right. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but God. It was only, you know, yeah, you, but you just didn't care back then, right? right. That, that's what they did because you had to make it work. There was no other way, right? Yep. <laughs> yeah. How do, you, wow. how do you hand place and hand route and optimize a design with 100 dip chips on it, right? You don't, right? Well, you get, you, you know, the placement's bigger. also important. You know. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. But, oh, you know... <laughs> But you can't make the board infinitely big. And uh, uh, what about you know, one of those types so, of? There's like racks that were like that, weren't there? Like, I forget yeah, the different. Yeah, the uh, Euro card. Well, the, the, the one U two U kind of racks stuff. And the, yeah, and there's the big six in uh, six rack unit high cards yeah. um, and stuff like that. Yeah, so you would design things to fit on those big rack cards. And boom, yeah. boom, boom. wow. Yeah. <laughs> And everything goes into a bus plane, you know. So that's how you design systems back then, and that's what's going to be inside this teardown. Um, yeah, is you know it's going to have a couple of boards slotting into a back plane because you know, and each one will have like a hundred dip chips on it. Wow. And yeah, that's yeah, a. I'm sure. That is nothing <laughs> more than a leaded, a leaded yeah. finger po- waiting to happen. <laughs> you know. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man! But yeah, though those those were the days. And uh, really, yeah, you miss the, that? You don't miss that? Come oh, on! Oh no, I don't. No, no, it's a pain in the yeah. ass. Yeah. No, there's so much integration. Like these days, you know, you don't see all discrete TTL logic anymore. I you don't know, want everything's to. Everything's done in one one big process. No, oh. I don't want to. Either. Give me that PGA any days. You know, like yeah, right? Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> oh boy. 
Yep. There's actually there's a, a, a link I put on the show notes I've, from actually a couple weeks ago now. I think some of this stuff is from before the new year. We kind of we kind of missed a show. We we took a little time off and stuff. But there's this really cool post about uh, reverse engineering an IC. And this guy, uh, he basically etched off the top, and then he started kind of, mm. he basically started moving down through the metal layers, and then he reverse engineered everything, and he actually drew I'm out the schematic. I'm always impressed again. by that. That Me is too. rocket science. Yeah. Oh yeah. That that's a I, lot of tedious work. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I re- I remember like back in the day, I was trying to, you know, I I did a lot of analog circuits in school, but we I only had like one or two classes in the actual analog IC design stuff, and oh man, I remember my teacher like had us like filling in graph paper with like colored pencils to try and like you know like do like IC <laughs> nice. layout. Oh god. And, yeah, right. And like looking at this, I have these horrible memories flashing back to me. Uh just <laughs> You know, since then I've worked in the chip industry oh, and uh yep. and it is cool, you know, like learning process stuff. I really highly encourage people to learn it. But when you start with graph paper and colored pencils, like uh, that is yeah, exactly. You know, that's like that's like saying that's like trying to teach someone programming. And this is how a lot of people teach programming. You know, it's like, okay, we're going to start with abstraction. You know, it's like like the worst the worst possible place to start instead of what what the hell is memory? What is a bit? You know, like what is a byte? And then you we're know? going to enter it all with dip switches on the front panel. And we're going <laughs> to yeah. load the data bits into each address. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> flip, flip, flip. Yeah. Very Altair-like. And, yeah. Uh, well, hey, you know, PCB layout. I used to use tape. I can remember as a kid, you yep. would lay it out with with your light box. You would have a light box, and you'd have the tape, and you'd lay it out, and uh, yeah, you you would actually have a you know a a roll of um a roll of tape, and you run it out by hand so you could get all the smooth bends and you know stuff like that. And you had your exacto knife, and you'd cut the tape, and you know if you were you know you had often the uh, pre. Uh, printed stick down IC pads, you know. So you go, yeah. I, I need a dip sixteen. So you'd go to your sheet of dip sixteen, you know, <laughs> dip sixteen footprints, and you'd place it down, and then you'd roll your your roll of uh, tape from each each pad out, and you know. And if you had to, that's why rip up and retry auto routing, right? That's where the name comes from, rip up and retry, because you would rip up the tape in the old days. <laughs> you would rip it up, and you go, oh, I can kind of sort of reuse that, but it's just. Yeah, yeah, it's mangled. Bin, you know, yeah. And, yeah, exactly. And oh, that makes me sick to my stomach thinking about doing that. That just sounds <laughs> I know, it's terrible. Painful. It's pretty painful. <laughs> I'd, I'd you know, never go back to that. Oh, I know. And you know, but it's it's interesting to think about that, right? You know, we 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 talked yeah. earlier on the show today about about um, you know, like learning and and you know, banging your head against the wall when you're learning stuff. And we talked mm-hmm. last time about about learning as well. Um, about what were we talking about last time? It was no, I don't know. I can't, some, can't remember but, what I had yeah, for breakfast. Yeah, but someone yeah. someone submitted a link on, on the on the show notes. Um, but basically, uh, the Jope <laughs> sent this sent this in. But basically, you know, the the point is there there is no fast way around it. I think that's probably what we were talking about last time. There's no fast way to learn electronics. Yeah. And there's actually this really great this post by uh, Peter Norvig saying the same thing about programming. You know, there's all these like yeah, yep yep learn it in 21 days and all these fast yeah, yeah right you know fast ways to learn things. It's like you're really not learning it. He's saying no, you should learn it in 10 years. You know, like. Yep. But I I really did like the thing the 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 point that he, that Peter Norvig makes in here. The thing, the 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 number one way to figure out, or to actually succeed in it, is to get some friends and then do it all together. Because then you keep encouraging each other. I mean, that helps now with the internet and stuff. Um, right. Yeah. But yeah, if you have people to you know, make it fun with, then of course you're going to learn it. You know, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. So it's uh. Yep. Ah, <sighs> takes Anyways, a long time. Uh, I will not be learning yeah. how to how to. Reverse engineer an IC, but I highly recommend other people do that. <laughs> right. It's uh, it's it's or at least go look at this. This is it's a cool, it's a cool uh, all right, cool bunch of pictures with all the hydrofluoric acid cutting down. Hey, Peyton trolls. Ah, oh, really? Yeah, I know. No. Yeah, they're suing a podcaster. Yeah. Right, next. Uh, uh, yeah. 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 They can come Speaking, and sue us because yeah, we're on iTunes. Yay. They could. <laughs> they won't, but they could. They could. <laughs> Speaking of patent trolls, like, there's a uh there was a there's an article <laughs> talking about uh uh 
uh, what are they called? Shoot. Nathan Mirvold's company. But basically, <laughs> they're like a bunch of, they have, oh, here we go, Intellectual Ventures. Um, you know the oh, Nathan Mirvold. That, that, that name just, that just name just t- turns you off right at yeah, the start. Yeah, exactly. In- intellectual exactly. Ventures, Inc. Yeah. Yeah. So there was an article oh, about please. them, since we're talking about patents. They have like a thousand shell companies in order to actually go after people for patents, or patents, as you say. Yep. Good Lord. Right, so they threaten them, and if they sue back, well, they just shut down the shelf company, exactly. right, and no harm done. Yeah, yep. exactly. Yep. And oh, and yeah. if they do it a thousand times, you'll get one or two people that buy it and pay up, right? Yep. And it makes yeah. it worthwhile business, unfortunately. Bastards. Yeah. You know, someone someone mentioned in response to this the, when you when you tweeted this link to me today about this pad, podcaster patenting thing, something about like requiring a, a, a prototype and like a working model or something like that. Was yeah. that was well, that used I thought, to be a yeah, thing? Yeah, um, I think I don't know if it used. Yes, it used to be. I think back in the old days, yes, they would reject your application unless you had a. Like I, I'm talking the days of Einstein, right? Yeah, working at the patent office. I think yeah, unless you had a. An invention, um, they wouldn't, uh, you know, a physical thing, they wouldn't actually patent that. But then, yeah, all hell broke loose in the 70s or something, Hmm. I think. And, yep, just went down the toilet. Yeah, I'm sure it's tough with software, but... Oh, that reminds me of the young Einstein. Have you seen the movie Young Einstein? No, I don't think I have. Oh, dude, it is an Australian classic. It's an Australian movie. Australian, really? About... Does he have an Australian, yeah, Australian. accent? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely, it's an Australian, uh, and um, and uh, he. It's about you know uh, Einstein and how he invented. Um, well, Einstein how he invented rock and roll and also you know it's a it's a comedy. <laughs> oh, okay. And it's very cool. And I remember you know there's this scene where he goes into the patent office and he um, he uh, tries to um, patent Emk. Which is E equals M C squared, right? He actually came up with this formula for, for formula for putting the bubbles in beer, right? <laughs> you, you will love this, right? So he, oh yeah, Einstein invents the formula for putting bubbles in beer, and it's Emk, as he called wow. it. E, e equals M C, and he walked in the patent office and I want to patent this, and you can't patent a formula, son. You know? And anyway, it's it's hilarious. I'll have to get some YouTube clips and yeah. post them in or something. But young Einstein. Oh, young you'll, Einstein. You'll love it. Not to be confused young with Einstein. young young Frankenstein, right? No. Other, young no, Einstein. By uh, Yahoo Sirius is the actor's name. That's his real name. Yahoo Sirius. Yeah. Sirius. Yahoo, as in Yahoo, the internet company, Yahoo. His real name is Yahoo Sirius. Well, his real name's, I don't know, Greg Platt or something. But no, he changed his name <laughs> right. formally. No, right, he right. changed his name, you know, to Yahoo Sirius. I'm sure it's on his... You know, uh, driver's license and passport. Weird. Weird. And he made a few movies back in the eighties, and he was yeah famous for making these comedy hmm. movies. And anyway, sorry, that just reminded me of that. No, I just wasted okay. five minutes there. That's okay, man. I'm, I'm counting, on, I'm counting down the minutes it right involved... now. I'm I'm counting on the minutes till the show's <laughs> over. You I thought why? you'd love it because it had beer. You know. Oh yeah, yes, I do love beer. Thank you, Dave. Thank you for right. reminding everyone that I I do love beer. <laughs> I'm the only one too. It's weird. It's an it's an addiction. <laughs> Freak. You know? I really, really enjoy having a beer. <laughs> He's gonna pour oh, it down boy. the drain. Next, come on. We've got like, you know, less than oh, like ten minutes left or something. I know. I'm counting down the if minutes. You, go over. you know why? Yeah. Well, why? Because my mill showed up. <laughs> oh, I, yes. Yeah, right. and yeah, it's sitting machine. there in front of you, just teasing you in the box. It is. Open it's me, like, oh, me, stop open. talking to that Aussie. Just come over and put this together. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I'm very excited. Oh, it's good. that's a stupid thing too, you know. It's like it's like uh, I got it now, but it's gonna be probably you know another month before anything happens. You know, it's like any it's like well, any electronics say, project. Does it, yeah. It, does it come fully assembled or do you does it come in bits and you've got it's, to do it's the not IKEA like thing? Tons of bits. It's like it's like two big pieces and then a bunch of littler pieces. Right. But then I have to bolt okay. like stepper motors onto it and stuff. Um, is this a uh, Chinglish one? Is this a Chinese? No, eBay this is built in the USA. Point? This is built in Arizona. Oh, hey! Yeah. Built by Uncle Sam himself. Exactly. Wow. And the, uh, I think the controller. I'm not sure who makes Gecko. The controller's a Gecko, but and that might be overseas. But the the person who did all the integration and stuff that was in mm-hmm. Missouri, Missouri. If you're from this, if you're from there. Um, oh, really? Yeah, it's Missouri. Yeah, instead of oh. Missouri. 
and wow. uh, <laughs> my friends from St. Louis. Um, but yeah, yeah, stateside, yeah, supporting. I guess it's local. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's exciting. I, you know, the other thing that's exciting about to me about it though is it's it's um, it's kind of like a foray into robotics. I know it's not really, but. You know, I've never right. really moved. I've never really moved anything with electronics before. You know, I've always done oh, okay. measuring right. stuff yep. and you know controlling yep. controlling you know, yeah, DAC values and stuff like that, outputs, inputs, um, yep. communicating that kind of thing. And so this is kind of the. I, I obviously didn't design the electronics, but so you're gonna like have a little cry when the motor suddenly start when you push a button and the motor suddenly starts to move you'll probably oh yeah i already did it on video i'll I post think that's that video. so wonderful oh okay right you yeah. haven't watched it yet oh yeah yep it's uh it's a it's a good feeling i didn't really do much i mean that's the thing like this is kind of my first like prosumer experience i've never really spent like this is not normal for me i don't spend money like this usually like, you know you know i've never bought oh, like, i was gonna printer. say how did you get this uh approved by she who must be obeyed Oh, um, well, I'm going to be uh, using it for various things around the house, of course. Like? Yeah, I'll figure it out. (laughs) (laughs) It's okay, Uh, your secret's safe with me. Yeah. (laughs) And all our listeners. 6,500 others. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Yeah, um, but, you know, um, it'll be good. But, you know. Yeah, it's cool. Use it to cut circuit boards, too everything else so right yeah but you I, know, like, I what wish else could... i had a separate area that i could do stuff yeah. like that in i don't really you have an office dave <laughs> yeah i know it's not really suited to you know laves and mills and pcb cutters and yeah etch tanks and all that sort of you know i guess so really suited but... to that I mean, you've got an air conditioner, right? It's pulling air through somewhere. <laughs> does it <laughs> vent externally? Right. That's all you need. Um, to, yeah, I'm sure it does. Well, I don't know. Maybe just Smoke, recirculate. Just bring in a smoke bomb. You'll figure it out real fast. Yeah, right, but, you know, yeah, like a lot of yeah. things. Like I, I've used I've used a PCB cutter before that has like a built-in vacuum. Then it just goes through a filter, right? And so it it just yeah, yeah. it pulls yeah. the it pulls the dust off, and then it just pulls it through a vac a, a, a vacuum. Yep. Hits the filter, yeah. and the air comes back out in the atmosphere. Same for a. Uh, a, uh, what's it Still, called? A I would much rather reflux. have a, you know, I'd much rather have like a, a workshop, you know, a mechanical yeah. workshop where yeah, I, can, like a you know, I can do and chemicals stuff. and stuff and I can, you know, and, and I can open the roller door and just let natural air flow through and, you know, all that sort <laughs> yeah. of jazz. Start right? pouring acid on the ground and just, yeah, you know, exactly. You know, if you pour it on the concrete, ah, who cares, you know, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah, but I'm yeah you know, like like any project, it's you know, there's startup time and it's tough, right? I mean, like even even when you get you know dev boards back, or you know, like you you know, you, when your power supply comes back, right? Even though mm-hmm. you've designed it, there's bound to be something that goes wrong. And, oh, of course. And oh, getting yeah. to that that Guaranteed. LED turning on is is a big deal. You know, like that's it can that be a pain a, in the ass sometimes. Yeah, it can yeah. take you a week just to you know finally get the bloody LCD going. Right, exactly. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll get there eventually. And I'll videotape yeah. everything. That's cool. Hopefully people will learn something from my mistakes. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Speaking of uh, learning from others, there's a uh, there's a really big list of homebrew RF circuit designs that I wanted to point out. It's not like a new list. It's pretty old, actually. But in terms of just, like, raw schematics available... Uh, kind of awesome <laughs> and like <laughs> like throughout the spectrum i mean 80 meters 40 meters 7 megahertz you know like I, i'm so out of practice with my my amateur license See, already those, but those those meters mean nothing to me I know, you know i know i don't know what the 40 meter band is you yeah. know like 432 no. megahertz yeah exactly i've i've already lost all that stuff so uh but if you're into that kind of thing like and and plus just looking at these things is fun you know like just looking at the actual schematics um, I'm sure and, if people are that are into it, they probably already know about it. You're right. We probably shouldn't mention any links on the rest of the Amp Hour ever again, huh, Dave? <laughs> right, because, yeah. The Amp Hour. If you're into no. it, you already know about it. <laughs> exactly. This show is pointless. <laughs> the Amp Hour. If you have to ask, you'll never know. <laughs> Do we have a slogan? We don't have a slogan. Nah. Dave and Chris yap at each other every week, <laughs> every other week. Maybe and then our guests listeners can come up with a real witty, cool, funny. Oh, that, that's not bad. I like poignant that. slogan. 
I like that. People have been adding we have to the... have a slogan uh, contest? Slogan contest? Well, we need to put some... Uh, some... Stuff where Some her coin mouth is. Up is uh, yeah, I don't have a coin. <laughs> yeah, no, screw that. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I could probably don't have any money to bill, but it might take a couple of years. Uh, <laughs> right. so get the first, I just send him a you know a block, and no, oh, I cut that. Sure. <laughs> uh, oh, I could send him a microcurrent or something. There you go. All right. There you and go. We'll figure something else out. We'll we'll come up with an amp yep. hour party pack. I, I like this. I like this idea. We <laughs> party should, pack. <laughs> we should we should come up with more things. Uh, you know, off the, off the cuff. Woo-hoo, I, a ten pack of resistors. Score. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, just what I needed. <laughs> three point three two kilo ohms. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Chris and Dave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is great. It what a convenient size. Five watt carbon <laughs> film. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> It'll fit in all my new projects. <laughs> okay, so how are we going to do this? We're going to do a, a slogan contest. Uh, should we just do it in the comment section or should we do an email? Oh, bloody hell, I don't know. I haven't thought that far ahead. How about we'll do slogan at theamphour.com. You send an email to that. We'll have it because that way it can be a, a blind test and then we can... We can have people vote on oh, it well, later. Then we're going to do work where we actually have to set up a email reader. Oh, that's easy. Come on, that's fine. Slogan at theamphour dot com. I will make sure that that's in the show notes. And, but but uh, then nobody gets to see it. No, until, no, no. Like, we'll put it up as a contest over. later once we know. You know, because if so, what if what if Mister Jeff Kaiser put up something right? Then you know it's from Jeff, and everyone's like, "Oh, Jeff's so great, right?" And then, uh, eh, right, eh. <laughs> you know, like but th- there is there, there's that bias, right? So it should be it should be blind. So. Right. And Jeff oh, okay. is great. Come on. Yeah. Jeff's great. We tried to get him on the show tonight, but he's he's busy or well, something. Well, he must be. He's working at Valve. And, yeah, uh, yeah. I think they've all been ordered to keep their mouths shut. Oh, yeah. 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 All right. Anything else for this the week? The have stepped in. No, that's it. We just came up with a contest at the last minute there. I like that. I like that, too. Uh, mm. You know, if, you've got, if people have questions, it doesn't have to be limited just to uh, Q&A shows like last week. Uh, you can always send us an email at theamphour at gmail.com. And we definitely want questions for next week when we are going to have, for the very first time, a CEO of a company on the Amp Hour. <gasps> yeah. We could really... A CEO of a two-person we're gonna, company. No. We're, we're going to have to behave. So next week, uh, the VP the VP of engineering and the CEO of Touchstone Semi- Semiconductor will be on the Amp Hour. As long as so our if you setup... want to know anything about yeah. starting up a semiconductor company, yeah. So they started up uh, what it was like two or three years ago now, but they were they were a fabulous semiconductor that do analog. So um, mm-hmm. if you got any questions about that, we'll have a I'll put a post up on it later in the week, so you can ask questions directly on the site, and you can ask on the I'll put it up on Reddit as well, so you can uh, awesome. post questions either one, and please please do because otherwise me and Dave will start coming up with contests and. You know, we'll start giving away touchstone gear without them authorizing it. And I think, <laughs> yeah, right. I don't know if CEOs go for that kind of thing, <laughs> but it's really cool. I'm excited about it. So, uh, yeah, so next week. Oh, we'll just put them on the spot, won't we? Because CEOs love being put on the spot. <laughs> they do. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us about all your quarterly I'm earnings. I'm surprised they haven't. Yeah, I'm surprised they haven't carefully vetted. You know, usually <laughs> if we went to, you know, if we wanted to get the CEO of, you know, um, Intel or something on here, you know, it would have to pass through five lawyers first, and you know. Yes, oh, they've they've been very generous be so awful. far. So we'll see. Yes, we'll see. and then they w- would want all our questions v- uh, vetted beforehand and guarantee in writing that we wouldn't ask about, you know, <laughs> Dave, <laughs> about Dave, their latest sh- scandal or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So next week, oh, Touchstone boy. Semiconductor. Uh, yeah, in the meantime, though, you can find us on Twitter and email and everything else. Yeah. All right, man. And if you've got any ideas for other CEOs you'd like to... See on this uh, prestigious um, here on this prestigious radio show. Then uh, yes. let us know, and we'll get them with our infinite power and industry uh, clout. Clout, <clears throat> clout, I believe. Yeah, it's clout. clout. Yes, that's the word I was looking for. Yes. Yep. All right. I'm sure we can get them. You name See them, you we can get them. Yep. That should be our slogan. You name oh. them, we get them. 
Well, we'll see if that's our slogan. Now we know who came up with that one. The Amp Hour. We will not be beaten on banter. <laughs> no? Or length no. of shows. We'll see you next week. Bye. This episode of The Amp Hour was sponsored by electronicsurplus.com. Electronic Surplus not only has hard-to-find components to put into your next designs, they also buy old components. So whether you need to liquidate your inventory or need to restock those hard-to-find components, go to theamphour.com/es. Yeah.